uh, the grades were, are listed upstairs as you signed in. Your, your final grades total will be uh, online by June 1st, okay? And if you have any questions, you come to room A639 to my, to my little den, okay? Uh, this has been a great class. I loved it. And I wish you good luck for your future. Have a wonderful summer. And call me anytime for your help. Uh, I think that's all I have about business, unless you have questions about the, anything in the class. Do you have questions? Is there a ha the light is in my eyes. Well, I need sunglasses. Here. No, no questions. Okay. Is uh, Joanne here? No, not yet. Okay. I wanted to talk to you a little about our program today, the Fashion Service Network. The Fashion Service Network is a group of the most experienced, seasoned professionals delivering solutions and opportunities in the industry to all of us. Uh, it is a goal of the Fashion Service Network to assist fashion companies to expand and to strengthen their business. And they will uh, talk about this, how it's done and what their program is, I'm leaving that up to them. I'm just giving you a skeleton outline. FSN is truly a visionary resource that explores strategies and business practices for the fashion industry. Now this is a, a, a group, the Fashion Service Network. It's very, very important. It's the foundation from where you go out and make your future. FIT teaches you the tools uh, whether you're in fashion design or fashion marketing, you learn all about, uh, you earn the tools when you graduate, but how to use them, how to apply them, where to go. This is a whole, whole big industry, and Fashion Service Network has been fantastic because the people who are uh, in this group, there are 23 in their group. Each one of them come from different areas of our fashion industry, whether it's uh, the finance area, the, the, which is very important, as we all know, uh, so that they, could, they will talk to you. We have them here, the panelists, and I'm going to turn over this uh, uh, podium to the moderator, Michael Stanley, Rosenthal and Rosenthal, and we have Andrew Jassen, Bow. He's uh, a Jassen Consulting Group. He will talk to you about his, his group. Then we have Stuart Cagle, 24-7 Incorporated, over there. Very wise. These are all wise men. Now we have a brilliant lady with them, <laughs> a beautiful lady, Linda Gaunt, and Linda Gaunt Communications. Uh, when I first met Linda, she has been a guest speaker many years ago. We just talked. At that time, she was with Armani, Giorgio Armani, and now she has spread her wings and she's in her own. And she's with the wonderful Fashion Service Network. All the best. Now, where is our Michael Stanley? Michael, please take this podium away or take me away, something. All right, now you'll have a wonderful afternoon. Thank Make you. notes and be, the, the, what you learn here, you'll apply. The last class is the best class. Here we are. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Papazian. Is this, you. can you hear me? Do you need this? broken. Are you, I don't know if I really need it, frankly. Do we need it? We don't need it. You can hear me, right? Oh, we need it for the video? Okay, so, I'll use it. so thank you very much for, for coming um, and attending. I'm not sure you had a choice, but you're here. Now, you're all fashion design majors? No. And you're not all graduating seniors. Now, who's a graduating senior? 
About half. And then the other half for what? Juniors? Sophomores? Okay, good. So we've done this before at least twice, okay? Three times now. And the interesting thing is that, you know, we're members of this um, group called, as Professor just pointed out, Fashion Services Network. And it's a, it's a group of professionals, business professionals, that have some nexus to the fashion industry, whether it's consulting or employment or finance or logistics or accounting or law or advertising. And we have uh, these 23 various members, and not one of them overlap. They don't do the same thing. Um, everybody has a different function in the business. And we're going to listen to the panelists, and you can ask them what they do and what I do, so forth. So let me just sort of point out, you know, there are different panels. And Linda Gaunt is the, is the founder, the chairman, the corporate secretary of Linda Gaunt Communications. And Linda, tell us what you do every day, please. Um, well, I have a marketing, communications, and PR firm, uh, a boutique agency. We're a team of eight, so we're small. But um, we uh, work with clients in, in helping them promote their business. Um, as Alice said, I uh, ran marketing and communications for Giorgio Armani. So our clients are from that world, luxury fashion. Um, and they range from very established, we work with Bottega Veneta, to um, emerging, Christian Cota, a young um, designer. Um, and every day what we do is work on their, their strategy, their positioning, their editorial, you know, uh, to get them exposure and more brand awareness. Mention, Linda, mention some of your, your clients, if you would. Um, Donna Karen, Urban Zen, uh, Christian Cota, Organic by John Patrick, uh, Han Rowe of Switzerland. It's not just ready to wear, or, or we really work on um, brands. Right. Um, so, and, and different sizes. Nanette Lepore. Names you know, others where you know, uh, you will know. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Stuart? Stuart is the, Stuart, you're the president of 24-7. No, you're I'm, not, you just got a promotion. I'm a 10. So who cares? Um, and, and Stuart is in the employment business, both temporary and uh, permanent. And he's got an unbelievable business with offices around the globe. Right, Stuart? You can yep. explain more. Uh, first of all, for any of you who were confused, this is what seasoned looks like. <laughs> Just wanted you to know that. 24-7 uh, uh, provides creative talent to the fashion, home, beauty, marketing, and interactive industry. We are focused primarily on helping brands position and reinforce their, their products. In the fashion space, Stuart, just to be fair, just speak a little bit for in the in, yeah, bring the mic closer to your face. There, it's good. Do I have to start again? No, no, you're okay. good. Just okay. checking. Uh, our um, our focus is providing talent to these various industries, and these brands can be an article of apparel, it can be a fragrance, it can be a vehicle, it can be a consumer goods product. Uh, the emphasis on the fashion side of the business is we have over 538 active fashion clients. That means someone whom we have generated an invoice to in the last 90 days. So we spread a fairly broad net in the fashion space, providing talent from virtually everything from an assistant designer to presidents of companies. That's 24-7. Good. And last but not least, Mr. Andrew Jassen of Hello, Jassen everybody. Consulting Group, LLP. Hello, everybody, and thank you for being here. Um, I own a consulting practice. I'm not sure what the word consulting really means other than the fact we provide advice and counsel to companies in matters of licensing and branding, in matters of raising money, of creating partnerships, 
and looking for retail opportunities. Uh, my colleagues and I all come out of the business, some as designers, some as manufacturers, some as salespeople, and our principal responsibility is to help our clients find their way. We help create business plans and maps and help them understand all the aspects of their business from putting together great product to help to distribute the product and how to create retail connections. Uh, by background, I started a long, long time ago when I was a little thinner and taller and less gray hair in the jeans industry and was very fortunate to find some great partners and sell that company to The Gap. A little later in my career, I became the president of Jones Apparel Group and learned a little bit more about sourcing and distribution and then eventually went on to a company that owned Yves Saint Laurent and owned Karl Lagerfeld's business and had Calvin Klein as a license and Ralph Lauren as a women's wear license. My colleagues and I work in the home area, apparel and jewelry, so we like to sort of say that whatever goes on your, home, on your body or in your home, whatever is a fashionable adornment, are parts of the business in fashion. And sometimes that even includes food. And uh, our principal business is putting deals together and making sure they work. And I think you'll learn today a little bit more about things in the industry. Good. I, I have some questions for the panelists, but if you, if something comes up that you, you know, like a question during this process, we can handle it. How's that sound? You, you want to, whatever you want to do. And then, okay, fine. That's okay. We're going to go with your agenda then. We don't want to get them too revved up. It's not good. Briefly, what I do, I'm in the, in the sort of the boring money side of the business. And what we do, we provide the working capital and the financing. It's really under a, a, a business platform called Factoring, where we actually, in most cases, we buy the receivables. If you're a designer and you're selling to Bloomingdale's, and we actually buy the receivables, we guarantee the credit to Bloomingdale's and perform all the, the, the processing of the, of the paperwork and all the very boring things. But we have some very exciting clients. Uh, the Olsen twins, the Rowe is our client, Diane von Furstenberg. Um, on and on. Yeah, who else do I have? Uh, Carmen Mark Valvo, who was just honored here. Was, I'm very pleased to say he was honored by the Alumni uh, Association Wednesday night, which was a terrific event. And, uh, you know, your boss, Dr. Joyce Brown, spoke. It was fabulous. The first question is, we've come through this um, very traumatic economic cycle where we went through sort of a recession. Okay, and you know we all read about it. We probably all, in, in some way, felt the the effects of this business downturn. But now it seems like it's stabilized, and from what we read and see in the papers, it, it's getting better. But why now, panelists, is now a good time to really seek a career in the fashion industry? Stewart. Um. Interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the, the marketplace as it has started to emerge from the doldrums of low the past 18 months is really primarily focused on coming to the marketplace with fresh new ideas. F fundamentally, there's been a, an, a history in the apparel industry of duplication at retail. How many different interpretations to a twill product or a denim product can the retail, can the retail community impose on the consumer? And what the climate right now is leading toward is a freshness and a newness. And guess what? You're fresh and new. So that's a very positive, uh, I think a very positive implication in terms of the, the retail and fashion community recognizing that while what historically has been done has provided a direction, necessarily repeating that historic activity could perhaps lead to the same demise as led over the past 18 months. So I think fresh and new, exciting, is, uh, makes it a very timely uh, uh, place for you folks to start looking to enter the uh, industry, I think. Linda? 
Um, I, I think it's a, an industry uh, where there are so many um, possibilities and, and um, so many interesting um, aspects. Uh, I actually graduated from FIT and I studied um, merchandising and management thinking I wanted to uh, you know, go into the, on the business side and went to Saks Fifth Avenue on their executive training program. And on the, at that time, the training program, you, were, you went through a series of assignments and I ended up in public relations and that changed my idea about uh, you know, what I wanted to do. But, um, and I you know, continued along that path. But there are so many aspects to this business where, where you're able to um, be creative and, and do well, actually. Yeah. Andy? I'm last. Fashion's about change. And who would know that a designer named Cavalli or Lagerfeld or somebody like anyone else would be able to sell a product at the highest end store in the world and at the same time be able to sell it at H&M? &M? It wouldn't have been possible or even conceivable. Who ever heard of Forever 21 and know it's one of the hottest stores in the country? Fashion's about change, and fashion's about product, position, presentation, price, and perception. And you all bring new perceptions to the reality of fashion. And what we see happening in fashion is, as Stuart said, that you've got to be ready to make a change. You've got to be ready to be in a position to do something different, and you have to be present. And as Linda would say and has said, you have to be able to publicize it and tell somebody about it. A lot of different ways of getting there. So. You're in a very lucky moment in time, though the job market's not as easy as one would think. All the things that you have learned and all the things that you see and all the things that you will experience are about how to put it in the box called fashion and show it to someone and get a result. You know, I can tell you something very pragmatically. I, I, I happened to go to a dinner recently, and I had the honor to sit next to, to Simon Doonan. He just happened, they just sat him next to me, and he was a very charming guy. You know who he is? He's the creative director of Barney's. Now, Barney's is always on the hunt for the next new, the, the next great thing. And, you know, we, would, we didn't talk about money things. We talked about, like, who's hot and what is he looking for. So he's always looking, I'm telling you, from, from his mouth, he said he's always looking for the next hot thing to have in the store. Why? Because if, if he doesn't want Saks to have it or Neiman's. He wants an exclusive, and he has. He has certain exclusives, uh, coincidentally, with, with, with the Olsen twins, with the row. Now, okay, so invariably, when... There's a brand, a brand that, that it has a lifespan. And Andy, you could probably sort of mathematically plot it out. And very few of these brands live forever. Now, there's certain exceptions like a Ralph Lauren, a Donna Karen. Andy could tell you more. But re the reality is they only live for so long, and then they burn out. And then the next new thing, you, perhaps, who knows, could be the next Donna Karen. It, it, it happens. Um, if you choose a career in fashion, how, how do you begin and where do you begin the search? Linda, you, you know this. This is an easy one for you. Where do you begin? Like if you choose, like you choose, you, look at you, you went to FIT, so how did. Did you get, how did you get your first job? They, they, uh, there was, um, uh, Sachs recruited on campus. So um, I went through a series of interviews and, and selected that. So that was my first job. And after Saks, I, was, I spent 10 years there. <laughs> I can't believe how many years. And then uh, got a call and, and went to Bergdorf Goodman as their uh, vice president of public relations, and then got a call and went to Armani for the next 12. Um, how do you, I don't know, how do you get your first job? And I think, I, think, I actually have had uh, several people intern for me, and that's a really good thing to do. Right. Um, I, I would think working with the school. Well, let's ask Stuart, thing. because yeah. he's in the he's, employment that's his business. Area. It's, Stuart, how do they get started, Stuart? Okay, this can be a shameless plug for 24-7, but I want you to write this down. It's the only thing I'm going to ask you to write down. 24, the number, 24-7, S-E-V-E-N, talent, Dot com. And if you go to that site, you can download a book, How to Get a Job in Fashion. There you go. The book's name 
is how to get a job in fashion. It's not a mystery. It's a pretty straightforward um, do's and don'ts about the process. What makes it even better is it's free. So I urge you to download it. And simultaneously with that, uh, two pieces of very simple advice. When interviewing, dress and act as if you already have the job you want. And two, when it comes to social networking, be smart. People now are going to look at it from an entirely different perspective. Just be smart about it. And uh, I urge you to read How to Get a Job in Fashion. And then come and see us. Good. Andy, what do you think about this subject? Um, not easy getting a job. Not impossible to get a job. The first thing you do is mount a campaign. Make a list, I'm sure you've done this before, of what you'd like to do, what you can do, what you've been trained to do. Look at those companies you'd like to work for, though probably won't get responses from any of them. Write a letter, a good letter, to a chief executive. Network. Try to meet as many people as possible that might be able to get you into the door for an interview. And then as Stuart said, make sure you do a good job during the interview, which means you're being interviewed, but you're really interviewing the company at the same time. And sometimes, unless you're really lucky, and it's hard to become lucky unless you're really ready to be lucky, you have to take a job that's offered to you and prove yourself and start sort of not in the top, not in the very bottom, but sort of a job you may not expect to have gotten or campaigned for. But begin a campaign. And then maybe you'll be lucky to find the job within the company or in the aspect of the business you'd like to be. But you've been prepared by one of the great institutions and with great advisors and great professors and great administrative help to get ready to go out there. How many of you worked in fashion while you're going to school? I'm assuming you understand from the sales floor of what it's like to prepare sales and get inventories ready. Well, some jobs in design really don't start in design. They may start someplace else. So, How long do you think, it, when you go on one of these interviews and you, you're dressing you know, appropriately and everything, and you take all that naughty stuff off Facebook, right, just in case they look. I have to remind myself to do that as well, Andy, okay? <laughs> And the thing is, how long do you think it takes them, once you meet whoever the decision maker is, how long do you think it takes them to make a decision? How long? Take a wild guess. Anybody can answer this question. Any, any answer is good. How long? It's probably about 30 seconds. It's probably the first 30 seconds. It's like, it's sort of like, dating in a way so you know immediately whether or not there's a possibility of a connection so I know when I interview it's really a fear it's you know I've already looked at the you know the resume and they've gone through HR you know they've got so we've not, it takes seconds to know so it's really that first Stuart you do all this interviewing tell them how to do it uh, look them in the eye answer the questions honestly don't get yourself in trouble and to Andy's point, uh, after the interview, write the thank you note. And if you can capture something from the interview, whether you were bored to tears, it doesn't matter. If there was something that was spoken about, reference it in your thank you note. Gee, I, that was a wonderful thought starter about fill in the blank, whatever the conversation was about. Thank you so much. Uh, it demonstrates a couple of things. First of all, it demonstrates a segmentation of you from all the people who didn't write the thank you note. So that's important. But it also registers with the reader that oh, this, this is a, a professional applicant. I'm, I'm intrigued. Uh, little things. It's a, a, the sum composite of 
a lot of little things that you do. I heard a wonderful story from a fellow that is in our organization about how you ensure a successful event and how you can fail in an event. And he used the analogy of you're going to an event and the first thing is valet parking, then there's coat check, then there's name tag selection, then there's table identification, then there's give me the program. At each turn, each one of those is a tiny little event. And in an interview, each one, each part of the interview is a tiny little event. And all you have to be preoccupied with is being successful at the little things and the sum composite, the end result, will be very positive. Linda, did you, did we, everybody hit this? Uh, I mean, my only advice is to, to, you know, make sure, I think you have to start with something that you know you love and I think you're already here for that reason. Right. Because you can end up working many years <laughs> doing thing, something and all of a sudden realizing one day you're not involved in something that you love. So I would say start there. Um, and then exploring what all of the different opportunities are, the different areas. You know, it may not be design, it might be marketing, it might be advertising, it might be licensing, it might, there are so many different areas that where you could still be in this industry um, that might suit you better than, than you know, another. Over the years, I, I've had a chance to meet a lot of designers who've been schooled here or schooled in some of the other educational institutions around the world. And oftentimes, you begin thinking that you're going to be a designer and you spend a lot of your time thinking about how to get that job, and hopefully you do. But some of the career paths that come out of design are as important in the building of a brand and building of a company. And those are called merchandising people. Mm -hmm. And those are called people in sales, people that can talk to customers, and product development. So oftentimes, though, your career may be focused on one aspect of what you've been educated to do, you too have to be slightly open to some of the opportunities which may occur. And if you look at some of the great brands in this country, Ralph Lauren or Calvin Klein or some of the global brands, uh, a good amount of the policy and success of those companies are not created by the designers who have the name on the door, but really by the merchandising and business people that are connected to those brands. So sometime, though we like to be focused and say, this is what I've been trained to do, using those skills to do other things are really important. Mike, I have one quick uh, yeah. add to that. <clears throat> Also, uh, don't turn a blind eye to freelancing. Freelance activity is a terrific opportunity for you to in interview the company while you're working. It looks great on your resume and gives you a terrific perspective about what's available in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So as you're looking for that permanent position, uh, remain available to freelance. You'll find uh, we have countless candidates who have freelanced and wound up moving on to permanent positions in the very companies they were freelancing with because they identified with the company and the company identified with them. You know, the, this FIT just really recently re-engineered their um, um, internship program, so they reach out to a lot of very nice companies. But the internships are very interesting because they're really, they're like work study, fine. But all they merely are are a long interview. So if, you, if you're fortunate enough to get an internship, you know, with a company that you have an interest in, they're looking at you. They're not, you know, fine, you're there, you're working. It's a, but it's really merely their, their, their real long examination of you and your work ethic and you know how you perform and how you get along play nice in the sandbox with others but just I'll tell you a couple of little very small things on an interview is that when you come in you're gonna look them in the face very important you're gonna say thanks Ms. Gordon for seeing me I really appreciate you taking the time and wait for her to tell you where to sit down it's a little stupid little etiquette thing but I assure you it works and then once you're sitting down you're gonna you know continue that eye contact and the rest, after that, that's about 30 seconds. So you, they know at that point whether you are for them. You're, and the rest should be easy. Okay. Um, how, how important is it to understand, Andy, these are your questions. How important do you understand the business of technology or techno 
What's the question here? Give Andy? me my sheet. I'll read it. I'm going to give a big. I, we, <laughs> the, we the, 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 the question that Michael is having difficulty reading: How important is the integration of technology into your careers in the future to include social networking, e-commerce, and alternate side of retail? Do all of you have expectations that retail will be only brick and mortar or only electronic or combinations? And what's important really as a statement is all of you who have been exposed to e-commerce and social networking are at, as we would say, the tip of an iceberg. It's the beginning of how business will be done, not just in fashion, but in all aspects of the business. But the connecting of the dots between public relations and finance and merchandising is the key aspect of what you'll have to rationalize. So you are in the beginning of something that none of us sitting here, or perhaps even your professors and, and teachers have ever really seen before, a whole new world of retailing, which no one would have ever existed, ever thought would have existed before. So you have something up on everybody else the ability to deal in a universe that no one's ever seen. That's my question. Very good. Lovely. Are you allowed to answer your own question? Well, so then how, Linda, how important, yeah. tell us about social media, e-commerce, and, and how that interacts with, you know, the well, fashion. Well, technology is, is extremely important. Um, and, and as Andy said, you know, being integrated, um, I mean, it's, I mean, you know what the traditional media is and then and now what everything that's happening online in the digital space, uh, what that brings to, uh, it brings to it. I mean, um, you know, I, there, it's just, as Andy said, it's a different way of getting images, of, of getting the story, of content, of, of, of you know, uh, how to, of selling, buying. Um, and, and the thing is, because you, you live, you know it so well, it, it will come more naturally to you. I think some people, it's, it's a little harder because they're, but you have to embrace it for sure. It's a big part of it. Yeah. No, it's very Image. difficult for me because frankly, you know, I'll be honest, I just learned how to use one of those push button phones, Alice. Okay? It's tough. You told me. We're, we're together. Does anybody have any questions? that they like to, feel free to ask a question. These are big, very big shots, and normally they charge a lot of money to talk to you. Yes, this young lady right over here. Tell the truth. Uh, what you what you did has no relationship to what you can do, but the fact that you were willing to do things that I'm reluctant to use the term beneath, but were certainly not part of the curriculum that you you're matriculating in. Uh, your willingness to uh, to participate in that is. Uh, speaks volumes about you as the individual. Uh, and it's, it's really a judgment call, too. I mean, if there's uh, really base things that you were asked to do, get a different internship. Uh, look at it yourself and decide if it, if it makes sense. But I wouldn't be reluctant to... Mopping is okay if the floor was dirty. A I great, think you have to self-promote, honestly, because everybody enhance, they amplifies what they've, let's face it, right? I mean, you can't blatantly say that, you know, you, you desi design the line or you, you know, blah. But, but if you were there and you, ha you, for example, I presume you had an internship or something like that, I would say, look, I was here and I, this is, I worked in such and such a department. I would frankly amplify, Linda, right? Right or wrong? I, I, if you're a part of it, absolutely. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, absolutely. and this is what happened, Not and this is what it, I did. Not that you did it, but you were part of those things. Yeah, but sure. a cornerstone of this presentation of who you are to somebody else is a cover letter, of you addressing a letter that's to the point, succinct, knowing something about the company you want to address the letter to, and telling who you are, because obviously it, 
at your age who haven't had a big resume or a dossier of what you've done. So if you can express interest in the person and the company you, you want to send that resume to, it'll resonate a lot more than looking at the fact of what you've done since you were 14 years old. So, you know, it's really important to communicate. Communication's the key to getting a job. Right. Yeah, Andy makes a really good point. Do, try and do your homework. As much homework as you can before the interview about with whom you're interviewing. Yeah. I mean, there's so much information available on companies. It's, am it's amazing, you know, what you can find out. But the other thing is, even if you interviewed for a job, call it at Saks, and they said, listen, you want to be you know, a buyer, call it. But there's no positions open, but you know, whatever. You're able to go in. They said, well, we, we can put you in the warehouse. Well, listen. I don't really want to work in a warehouse. I want to be in, you know, in, in um, merchandising, right? Once you're in, to move to a different department, in a, once you're in, it, it, you can invariably have a much better shot at moving into a different department. But when you interview, say, listen, you know what? My entire life, I wanted to work in the warehouse. Okay, so you, you, but you have to create that need for them to, to hire you. There was somebody who had a question. Did I see? Yeah. What? There's got to be some questions. Yes, this young lady right here. My suggestion, make a one page. If you can't consolidate, well, how long have you been working there? <clears throat> okay. My, I would, I would, my suggestion, Stuart, you would know better, but I, I think if you can get it onto one page, you're gonna be far better off. Because listen, whatever you're interviewing for, they don't, they can't expect you, what field do you in? Okay, fine. You can't possibly gather enough, you know, you're there to, to get a job, and so there's, there's I, I would try to, con I, that's my suggestion. What, Andy? Well, I just want to tell a quick story about a, a former FIT graduate in, in the jewelry design department, um, relatively well-known designer named Scott Kay, uh, who's a client of mine and the administration certainly knows. He came here. Uh, 25 years ago, he was a caterer, he used to cater parties, but he had this great desire to, to learn to be a jewelry designer. And he lived through the process and became pretty good at what he did, but he couldn't get a job. And what he did is he took a job in sales. And he became a salesperson within his community, and he did very well. And after three or four years, he put some money in his pocket and had the guts to go out and try it on his own and went to a bank and borrowed some money. He might have hocked his car or hocked his apartment. And 24 years later, or 23 years later, he has a company that does in excess of $30 million. He is a designer. His spirit is that of a salesman first and a designer second. But in order for him to see, succeed, he had to sort of compromise a little bit. He didn't take the design job because he wasn't offered the job. But what he did is he learned his craft by selling someone else's product and then became a designer. So oftentimes, again, the path to success is not that way. It may be sort of that way until you can kind of figure it out. There are always jobs in sales, and you can get back in design. Some of the greatest designers started in sales, though they came off the resume. So in other words, you're getting extra credit for a good question. How does that sound? Okay. Yes, this young lady right there.
You could do it. Uh, it's a little challenging. Okay, to start a business, it's, it requires a couple of things. Number one, you know, you have to have a talent. Let's assume you have a talent and you have a fabulous idea, whatever it, it could be. But it requires some other things because in, invariably, most companies fail within the first year because they're not capitalized right, they don't have the right advisors to steer them through, you know, legal, sourcing, uh, customs issues, tax issues, all these things that are, listen, in, in very, you may not think of, but they're looming out there to, to entrap you. So it's not that you can't do it, it it's possible to do it. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you, a, a, it's a stupid story, but it's very interesting. When he first started, Steve Madden, Jim, it's a true story, he came to see me and he had two partners and they were, they were, um, they were building shoes in Brooklyn and they came in. Steve was this, he was the, what they would call a line builder and the, and the salesperson and his two partners were, were factory guys and they were making shoes and they had shoe dye on their hand. And they came to see me with invoices and they needed money and they were, but, but there was something about Steve and they were, I had only started and he just, he got his shoes into, they were boots actually at the time. He showed me his boots and he says, what do you think of these boots? I said, Steve, they're great, but everything I like never seems to sell. I can't understand it. But he started in business, and I took a liking to him. And today, and Andy knows him as well. He's he's a he's a he's about a five hundred million dollar, very successful. You know, he's had a, things that you know, he had some bumps along the way, but which we won't even mention. But he's he's a very successful, very he's extremely talented. He's a character. He wears a baseball cap and everything, and he and people do it. And and it, it's it's true. Uh, you see people that start up, and I'm, I don't want to yeah. tell you no, but Andy, tell them the things you have to be concerned about. All the things you don't want to know about, including understanding the balance sheet, how to find a lawyer, a good accountant, how to figure out how to do production and where, made, yeah. minimum guarantees, how to publicize what you're doing and tell somebody about it. Um, what we have done here before is, how many of you are bus business students? Can you raise your hands? And how many are design students? Well, most of the successful fashion companies have had a left side of the brain in design and a right side of the brain in business as a partnership. Ralph Lauren had Peter Strom, and Calvin Klein had Barry Schwartz, and Nanette Lepore has a husband, Robert. As you're thinking about design and putting the production standards together, someone has to worry about visiting Michael and talking about borrowing money or talking about a public relations campaign, or talking to Stuart about how to hire people. And it's really very difficult to do all these things alone and on a timely basis. So no one is going to ever tell you, don't start a business, but don't expect it to succeed at first. And you know what? Most designers have a little bit of bumps. They start and stop. But know the business side as well as you know and love the design side. And you business folks who've studied business and understand what it is to look at a balance sheet and understand cash flow and design, understand how much time goes into designing and conceptualizing, which isn't easy either. So get married. <laughs> I mean, I could name you know, so many people that we, we took in as startups that were successful. And because somebody said to me, look, this is a very, you know, like a, a who would know, you know, the, the product and they know merchandising and they know who invariably what stores are going to buy the product. And we've taken, you know, sort of a shot and we've backed, you know, financially. But they had to start with, you know, initially they had to start with some capital and have, you know, they had, they were running it at some level. Um, and a lot of these people are still around. I mean, but frankly, I think there's more that didn't make it than did make it. But I don't want to tell you that you could be, you know, you could be f terrific in a year if you start up. I just don't want to say. But, you know, the interesting thing is you could always approach us, Abe. It's okay through the website. You know, all our emails and so forth are there. And if you want to talk to us, you know, privately because, you know, it's an open forum, we're happy to talk to you, and, and you could reach us individually through through the website. So, does that does that? Yeah, the website is what Abe. 
Fashions, yeah, there you go. The only thing I would add to that is, because I do work with young designers, um, the ones who have, it, it's almost like driving. My son just got his permit, <laughs> and he thinks right. he knows how to drive. <laughs> right, yeah, right. But, the, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the, the, it's, the experience is so invaluable. Just a little experience, even in someone else's design room, and, and, and seeing the different parts of the company, and, you know, working under someone for a while, then to, then to start your own, to have... It just that experience is pretty invaluable, I would think. But like yeah. Michael said, it's not that you can't. It's just a little easier uh, with some extra exposure. Yes. Yes. Uh, tie it to an event. Uh, the, uh, you've had the interview, send the email. Don't then, three days later, send another email asking if he got your email. You know, <laughs> if there's another event, continue the process. Does that answer your question? But you could write a handwritten note as well. Sure. People appreciate those. It's unusual to get them and stands out. It's true. I don't think you could be, you know, the worst that's going to happen, you're going to be a pain in the backside and they're going to just get annoyed. But, I, you know, big deal. I, I think if you, you know, when you go on an interview, right, so you can say, well, you know, what's the, how long, what's the timeline? Well, you're the first one we interviewed and this process is going to take 30 days. Fine. You're going you're gonna to shoot out very promptly the thank you, nice meeting you. And then in third, you know, and then, has anything happened? You know, I'm still very interested. I'm still not doing anything, and I'm still very anxious. To, you know, or if something happened in the company that you could, you know, mention in an email. But I don't think the worst thing comes to worst. Stuart, they'll get annoyed. So what? They get annoyed. You weren't going to get the job anyhow. So what? <laughs> right? So I wouldn't be too shy in 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 shooting emails. Yeah. Good question, Ralph. Yes, young lady. good question. That's a very good question. Very good question. Um, go ahead, answer the question panel. <laughs> Would you repeat the question? No, <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the sort of the networking business and each of the members of the organization have individuals, companies. We do a variety of things as you'll learn if you look at the website. And a good amount of your future and your success will be about networking and getting into somebody's network. So if I can just take a moment and talk about who we reach, we have a constant dialogue running with retailers all over the globe, talking about business from how you finance it to new designs. Uh, Linda talks about how to present fashion and how to make people aware. Michael's constantly talking to his clients about who has credit and who's got credit problems. Obviously, you've heard from Stuart about in the channel from technical to sales to design people, interviewing and talking to them. But what we are are early stage listeners and late stage influencers. And what that means is we're in the network of communicating what we see that makes sense to our clients. But we're also a problem because we, we tend to be people and we filter. So you have to talk to us and try to convince us from time to time that your thoughts, your ideas, have a reason to be presented to somebody else. If, yeah, Linda. No, no. no I was going to mention, if you could find someone in life, no matter what stage, to sort of mentor you, like somebody who's been there, done that, and, and say to them, listen, I have, this young lady, where I have an idea and I want to get in business, I want to get a job, I want to do, how do I go, somebody who's been there and done it and saves you all the aggravation of getting turned down and, you know, I went on like 12 interviews and I can't, you know, it's like you're beating your head against the wall and it's very discouraging and it, it is and, and, yet, and yet how do you feel 
you know, excited and pumped up when you go on that, you know, how much Red Bull can you drink? Before the interview, you have to feel good. And you will ultimately get there, I assure you. Forget about the economy. You'll, you'll all get jobs and, and be rich and famous one day. But, you ha but how do you do it? It's easier if you could not ride somebody's coattails, perhaps, but have someone who's guiding you. There's one little interesting piece. You know, you will t learn about branding and the concept of branding. And these, these you know, people are, are experts in branding. But I'll tell you, I'll give you one little piece. If you can consider yourself your own brand and consolidate all your skills and your talents and, you know, what you know so far, you don't know everything. We don't, we're, it's, we're all invariably learning, right? And if you can consolidate in, in, into a, that into a brand and able to project that brand to, you know, a potential employer, a customer, a client, whatever, somebody you want to date, who cares? Okay, it's a very, it's a, you've, if you start thinking along that branding issue, Andy, tell me if I'm, I'm not right on this. You're absolutely right. There you go. You, your job is to know you better than anyone else and sell you to somebody who hasn't bought you yet. And quite frankly, it's that fi first 15 or 30 seconds of that meeting, you'll make the impression, and after that the hard work starts about who you are, what you can do to make a difference. And you know what? It really works. Again, sitting here in, in the audience, you've been trained to watch and listen and learn and to talk and to communicate. You represent the future of the industry, and there are a lot of opportunities. They don't happen quickly. They will happen. One of you will be the next George Romani and the next Calvin Klein, and one of you the next Arno running a large company. But you gotta work. And remember, not every job will be successful. A lot of us have had a lot of jobs before we got to who we are today. So you learn, you're building blocks. Everyone except for Michael has had one job all his life. I think I'm going to get fired soon, though, Andy. Yes, this young lady here. For established and emerging. Um, and, and my um, position is that the conventional or traditional media is still the most influential. It even influences what's happening in the digital space. Um, so it's not going away tomorrow or, 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 or a year from now or five years from now, but it is shifting and there's more that's happening um, online. Um, whether, you know, publications, websites and, and bloggers and then of course the social media part. I actually just canceled my Wall Street Journal subscription. I'm getting it on my iPad now, so <laughs> um, it's shifting. Um, and it's pretty exciting, actually, um, because what's happening in the social media space puts more power in, in the individual's hands. You can, get, you can c communicate to your uh, potential consumer uh, directly without the filter of the magazines or the editor who doesn't, you know, you don't know if they're if they've decided you're good enough or not. So um, we've done for both the uh, emerging designers and, and the um, even established because they know if they want to stay relevant, they have to be part of it. Although fashion was a little late to the game, but they're, it's pretty engaged now. To Linda's point too, uh, if you're into social networking and into fashion, one thing I can assure you is the vast majority of fashion companies that you might be applying to know nothing right. <laughs> about social networking. Nothing. So you may well be the expert. And it might be something to think about hitchhiking on as a candidate during the employment process. You have a love of fashion, it's your passion, and you understand the implications of the, of the social networking phenomenon, particularly uh, United broke my guitar. How how sensitive the marketplace is to negative commentary. You can go into an interview and express your ability to negotiate that somewhat treacherous rapid, and I guarantee you there'll be a bobblehead across the desk because they know nothing about how to do that. 
Ja. Want a microphone? Flickr? Are you thinking the photo or YouTube or? For businesses, for businesses or personal? For business. The, I mean, social media is the big category and, and today, and it will continue today. The most important platforms are Facebook, Twitter. Um, that, I, you know, that could change. But the, that's what most companies are working on now. In term, and as a matter of fact, some companies' Facebook pages have almost taken the place of their website because it's much more relevant and time, you know, they can, it can be updated and it's interactive and where websites are almost sort of just stagnant. You know, I, I can tell you a real life experience. We had uh, one of our clients, it's about a $100 million dress manufacturer, he came in and he was, he was entertaining taking a, a license with Ivanka Trump, right? And I said, what does she know about dresses? He says, forget that. He says, look at, he's, he came in with some numbers as to whatever she does in life. She puts it on her Twitter page. He says, right. and, and, the, and he, the, the hit rate, he says, is, it's like off the charts. He says, you know, she's, she's brilliant and, you know, she's, you know, attractive. Or, you know, she's got a presence. And he just, based upon that, was entertaining, you know, taking a license with, uh, with this young lady. It's amazing. It's, it's influence, it's, and you it's find yeah. you know, that in, in different places, and certainly online. Yeah. People so with it's, influence who people will follow and listen to. And so it's driving sales you know, outside the customary, you, know, you have to put, you know, take uh, ad space and billboards and you know, the traditional media. Here's this whole new type of media that's actually driving, that's driving business. There's some people don't, that don't even that sell, you know, online, they don't even have a, re you know, they don't even have bricks and mortars. So you use that as your leg up. That's your right. hypotenuse Absolutely. to get to the triangle. Yeah. You are in that world. And yeah. again, you can go into a meeting, go into a interview, and be able to be the expert in that conversation, or at least lead that conversation in some form. And it's fairly accessible as well, in terms of it doesn't cost what other forms of media cost. Yeah, this young lady. As a business, um, I think it's it's um, to, in, like in anything else uh, for it to be unique, for you to find your voice, uh, to communicate what's you know sets you apart. Um, yeah. What about the human aspect of? getting a business started, getting a customer, getting a job, you know, like who you know, like a networking type platform. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big part of it, for sure. But, uh, the messaging, what it is, what it looks like, what it sounds like, the messaging yeah. is, I think, the, the most important part in terms of setting yourself apart. Um, and then absolutely connecting and growing the base yeah. um, is important too. Because it doesn't matter if you're not speaking to anyone. <laughs> doesn't matter what you say. You know, it's interesting because you can, it's always good to use human, you know, machines are great, but it's human beings are good too. Because for example, if you're looking for a job at Saks, right? And you happen to know, you know, one of your friends, her dad works there. You know what? It's nothing inappropriate for asking your friend, do you think your dad could get your re the resume over to HR? Andy, there's nothing inappropriate right. with that, Andy. I, I think right or wrong? 
networking is the key to success in every business and reaching out to anyone that might be an influencer to help you. But let me ask, the question you were asking before, is that about selling a product or networking yourself? If, if you can find a retail store or a retailer that likes you or willing to take a chance and put something in the window, though it may sound a little corny, most retailers are looking for something new to sell. And oftentimes somebody will take a shot at, at doing something new and unusual. You have to have a product if you want to sell it in some location that somebody can buy it or touch it. Uh, we believe that brick and click is still important. You just can't rely upon uh, the airwaves to sell a product. You really have to reinforce it. And there are some unusual cooperatives that you can sell product in or even some unusual flea markets where you can present product and people will give you the chance and the space. But it requires you putting it together and a perspective of why you're selling it there. And if they're not going to buy your product, it's the ability to speak to a consumer and saying, my product is as good as someone else's. So. If they're not buying your product, whose would they buy? And to be able to talk to a consumer or a retailer about who you are is about knowing the competition as well. Why should they buy you and what could you do for them? I, I think also, I mean, like, like um, Michael said, um, the networking part. But networking with, with the obvious, you know, who are your friends, who are your friend's parents, who, you know, the people you know, uh, but also, there's so much information available in terms of, uh, and, and you, you're able to reach people. So if there was a young designer who's a little more established than you because they've been out of school for three years and they have a business, you can actually reach them through Facebook and offer your jewelry for their show or, you know, um, you know that kind of, or become a thought leader in an area or tie to some kind of cause, um, which there are then those communities that you, you know, become part of as well. So expand your network. Um. But you have to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have and to. And I think you and have ask to have for endorse the, uh, those endorsements because that's really what. Yes, it is. Professor. You're, the people that are raising their hands are looking for internships the, for this summer. Okay. Okay. Right. How it's not easy, right? And a lot, and in in many, I mean, I know the school. If you do an internship, they have to. There's got to be, you know, some pay. They have to. They have to get paid. Something. Something. You know. I agree with you. If you can afford to we, do with um, that, you know, sometimes they'll pay you transportation money or something. You know, but we just to get in. We work with interns, and, and yeah. we've, we've hired interns yeah. that have worked with us, but right. the, ex the um, experience they get is unbelievable from, you know, fashion shows to shoots to working with editors to samples to designers. I mean, it's a good thing to do. Right. And, and you can, you know, you can put it on the resume, which is, right. that's really the goal. I mean, the goal is to ultimately get a job, but, yeah. It's a very good thing. It's a very good thing to do. Especially if you've identified, you know, the area that you want to be in or the company that you want to be in. It's a really good way to start. And also distinguish yourselves while you're there. Ask questions, smart questions. Carry a pad and make notes. It's impressive when someone takes notes. But make sure. yourself look like you're 
interested in what's going on around you, and that's what distinguishing yourself is about. Um, you know, don't do outlandish things at the wrong moment. Linda's going to answer that question, because don't ask the boys. They're going to... Really? What? <laughs> Dress professionally. Dress professionally. I mean, they're going to, listen, I know, but they're going to be, listen, they're smart. They're, they're, they're going to dress appropriately. They're not going to wear anything too wild. I, I agree they, that you listen, should dress. If they come to the class, it's a different story. But in an interview, everybody knows that address. They're not going to do that. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. Depends on the job that. you're interviewing. Alice, for. they're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but this is a creative field. Um, but to dress professionally. Yeah. Back to the internship thing for, for just a second, though. Uh, <laughs> I have some notes. Uh, you've heard that expression, go the extra mile, go to. Find a way to get it done, as opposed to chatting with all the other people who say the task is impossible. Don't take anything personally. This isn't a personal attack. And in this marketplace, there are, there's lots of stress and angst and stuff. Don't take any of it personally. To Mike's point, find a mentor, assume responsibility, and take it and make it your own. Just consistently challenge yourself to learn and grow professionally. You're uh, an unusual group with all the tools looking to enter an industry that, frankly, without people, is sunk. So you're an asset. View yourself as such as you start this process. But I, the other little point I want to into, if you do get an internship, these internships, again, get in early. Get in early. You know, if, if you have nothing to do, say, hey, is there anything else for me? What can I do? Can I help out? What can I do? You know, it's always because, remember, they, out of all the sea of people they, they have to choose from, you want them to choose you, okay? And so you really have to, it's almost harder, once you're in and you're working and you get to be all level. Can I tell you something? It's not that hard. You figure out how to do it and it's, it, trust me. It's, I remember in my early career, it was, it was very hard. I had to work very hard at this and I had to, you know, find a mentor that helped, helped me through. But once you get to a certain level, I assure you, it becomes very easy, okay? And provided you don't make any real big mistakes, it, it just happens, and, it's, and it starts to, you know, just flow from there. So, um, Andy, did you want to say something, Andy? Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming. <laughs> now, these a, long, long, a long time ago, good, a lot of right? people would start their careers in the mailroom. Being that there were no mailrooms any longer, yeah. you're in the e-commerce space. Yeah. And a lot of the chief executives and heads of companies in fashion and retail literally did start their careers in the mailroom. So if you take the mailroom away and, and, and look at where we are in digital commerce and e-commerce and the electronic retailing, that's where you are. And again, to be redundant in everything we've said earlier, you have a leg up on everybody that's not been there. Use it. And it's a great tool to have and exploit it. Thank you. Good. Is it what, we have room, time for one more question? Did you have one more question? Or were you just waving at me? Okay, good. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Thank you, Professor Bafazian. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our esteemed yeah. panel. And thank you, FI10. Okay. Thank you. I felt as if I wanted to go out and start becoming a, an intern and get looking for a job again with all the information you have which I didn't have when I was, uh, I got, I, I, well, I started interning while I was still in college, and it was terrible, because I was very dumb and stupid. But 
You have this great, great gift today. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you all. Stuart you. and Jules and Linda. And you're a great moderator. I want you to know that. Yes. Uh, don't encourage you can get a job <laughs> moderating. Jesus, don't encourage <laughs> we, we can give him a job here. I need a job. Yeah, a, job a moderating team. Can he teach corporate finance? Oh, boy, I need no, that. I'm not, I was never no, good at no, numbers. No. no, me too. I failed, I failed algebra twice. Wait a second. We're not keeping good on numbers. You are wonderful. They're great, right? Thank you. Great to see you. Great job. Thank you. Right? You told me what to wear. Yes. I was wearing.